O oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is, is a great God and a great King above all gods. Let us pray.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Heavenly Father, for you all things are possible. And you never fail those who put their trust in you. Grant us such a measure of faith that in times of trouble we may not lose hope but with confidence offer our prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 30. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob, and he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Here ended the Old Testament lesson. Thank you. 
The epistle is taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 11, 1 to 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 1 to 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a most excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of the gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. This testimony pleased God, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Here ended the epistle reading. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 onwards. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyria and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from one region came out and cried, Have mercy on me. O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of Christ. faith with the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We welcome all of you to this morning worship service as we observe the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. We continue to pray for the sick of a parish, May the Lord God grant all of them a very speedy recovery. Once again, it's a request to all our parishioners. If you wish to pay your subscription online, you can do so using the online facilities. 
For more details, you can kindly look at our newsletter or at our WhatsApp group. The Diocese of Jabalpur is celebrating 50 years of its glorious existence. On this occasion, the Diocese of Jabalpur will be publishing a souvenir. If anybody is interested in giving family greetings, you can contact us as soon as possible. The cost of this family greeting is only rupees 10,000. We would like to inform all our parishioners as per the directive from the central government, we will be opening our church from the 27th of September, that is next Sunday onwards. We will be having regular service in the church from 8.30 a.m. onwards. We all have to follow the protocol when we come to church. We will request all of you to please sanitize your hand before entering the church. We will also be having a temperature gun in which your temperature will be noted and when you enter inside the church we will request you to, to sit on the ribbons which is tied on the benches so that we all maintain social distancing. We know that it is very difficult for all of us to come out from our houses but let us come and worship God and thank Him for all that God has done for us. So from next Sunday onwards we will not be having our online service, but we will try to reach out to you through Facebook. But we will be having a normal worship service, a normal worship service from 8.30 in the morning. Every Wednesday, our church will be open between 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., where you can come and say your individual prayers. And if you wish to receive the Holy Communion, then you can do so. Usually a harvest thanksgiving festival is observed on the first Sunday of September, but this year due to the lockdown, we were not able to observe it. On 4th of October, we will be having our harvest thanksgiving Sunday and we will request all our parishioners to please note that this will be the time where we will offer our thanksgiving to God. We we'll request you to take one envelope, harvest thanksgiving envelope, which is kept at the last pew, and please offer your thanksgiving offertory at the altar. The following celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversary during this week. Militant G, Mr. Suresh, Abraham, Mr. Ralph Russell, Bernice Rushton, Mr. Michael Tangadurai, Mr. Ronald Raymer, Mrs. Shilpa Chaudhary, Aradhana Charles, Mrs. B.C. Melville, Mr. Enosh Masi, Mrs. Sophia Palmer, and Mrs. Stephanie Ali. We wish each one of you a very happy birthday with God's blessing. The following celebrate their wedding anniversary during this week, Mr. David Massey and Mrs. Priya Massey and Mr. and Mrs. M. R. Melville. We wish the couples a very happy long married life with God's choices blessing. Let us pray for all those who will be celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversary during this week. And let us also pray for our country, our nation, for our city, Jabalpur, as so many people are getting infected by this virus day by day. Let us pray. God, a loving Father, we thank you for taking care of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the privileges which you have bestowed on us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this life which you have given to us. There are so many people in this world who are not able to see a new day in their lives. There are so many people in this world who are having problems to have one square meal a day. And we are really grateful to you, Lord Jesus, that you have blessed all of us and taken care of us. Especially at this time, we just want to pray 
for our city Jabalpur. We want to pray for our state Madhya Pradesh and for our country. As day by day so many people are getting infected by this COVID-19 virus, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless all the people, those who are infected, Lord Jesus. Bless them that they may have a speedy recovery. And we also especially pray for all the doctors and the nurses and all the other people who are working in the hospital and looking after these patients. Be with all of them, Lord Jesus, and bless them and guide them. We especially pray for our parishioners. As from next Sunday onwards, we are going to start with our worship service. We ask you to bless all our parishioners as they will be coming once again to the church as we will be worshipping together in the holy sanctuary, Lord Jesus. We ask you to bless each and every one of us. Let your mighty hand be on us, Lord Jesus, so that we may be protected as we come out of our houses to worship you and glorify your name on high. At this time, we also specially pray for all those who will be celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversary during this week. Bless them, O Lord, so that they may have many more blessings from you. Bless them, O Lord, so that this new year can be a blessed year for them. Committing all of us and especially all those who will be celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversary into your loving hands. We ask this prayer in your holy and matchless name. Amen. Before we hear the word of God from Reverend Shub, let us go into the time of praise and worship. Let us come into his presence and submit ourselves. The theme for meditation is the reward of persevering in faith. Let us sing few choruses as Psalm chapter 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Let's sing in a loud voice, we shall overcome. Chapter 12 verse 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace. Let's sing when I look into your holiness. Oh 
trust in the Lord with all your heart and he will make straight your path as Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 says so let us sing trust in the Lord Greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I take this time to thank God for giving us this beautiful day in our lives and to spend our time in His presence. Before we go into the time of meditation, let us look to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you for all your grace and blessings in our lives. Thank you for guiding us in each moment of our lives. As we are going to hear your words, speak to us and help us to understand your words. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The theme for our meditation is the reward of persevering in faith. I repeat, the reward of persevering in faith. What is perseverance? The perseverance means persistence in doing something despite difficulty in achieving success. In the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, it is significant that the narrative about the woman who perseveres in her attempt to get Jesus to listen to her plea. In today's Gospel, we have the incident of the Syro-Phoenician woman. She was a Gentile, a non-Jewish woman. To her request for the healing of her daughter, Jesus answered very rashly saying, Can we take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? Jesus was using a common sneering Jewish term for a Gentile when he called women a dog. Jesus always known for his kindness and compassion. He came to heal us and not to insult us. Did he call this woman a dog in order to insult her? No. He called that a woman a dog not to insult her, but to teach her and all the others through a shocking method that what recommends person to God's mercy is not race, or blood, or nation, or language, but faith. 
Here we find who Canaanite a woman is belonging to a different faith, who comes to Jesus to have her daughter healed. Jesus is unwilling to meet her, probably because he believes that his message was only to the Jews. Yet it is this woman's persistence that challenges him. In our sermon, we shall look at the encounter between Jesus and this woman through the lens of exclusion to inclusion. The faith which won the blessing. There are certain things about this woman which we must note. The first and foremost, she had love. In her heart, there was that love for her child which is always the reflection of God's love for his children. It was love which made her approach this stranger. It was love which made her accept his silence and yet still appeal. It was love which made her suffer the apparent rebuffs. It was love which made her able to see the compassion beyond and behind the words of Jesus. The driving force of this woman's heart was love. And there is nothing stronger and nothing nearer God than that very thing. The second thing is this woman had faith. She showed Jesus respect. She addressed Jesus, Lord, son of David. The nameless Canaanite showed Jesus more respect than the Jewish religious leaders. We can see this woman's faith growing as she is confronted with Christ until she glimpsed him, however distantly, for what he was. It was faith which grew in contact with Jesus. It was a faith which worshipped. She began by following. She ended upon her knees. She began with a request she ended in prayer. Whenever we come to Jesus, we must come first with adoration of his majesty and only then with the statement of our own need. The third thing is this woman had indomitable persistence. She was undiscourageable. This woman came because Jesus was not just a possible helper. He was her only hope. She came with a passionate hope, a clement sense of need, and a refusal to be discouraged. She had the one supremely effective quality in prayer. She was in deadly earnest. Prayer for her was no ritual form. It was the outpouring of the passionate desire of her soul. The fourth thing is this woman had the gift of cheerfulness. She was in the midst of trouble. She was passionately in earnest and yet she could smile. She had a certain sunny heartedness about her. God loves the cheerful faith. The faith in whose eyes there is always the light of hope, the faith with a smile which can light the gloom. This woman brought to Christ a gallant and an audacious love, a faith which grew until it worshipped at the feet of the divine, an indomitable persistence springing from an unconquerable hope, a cheerfulness which would not be dismayed. She was persistent. Jesus was the only hope she had for the healing of her daughter and so she passionately persisted notwithstanding the discouragements. The Canaanite women showed great confidence in Jesus by throwing herself upon his mercy and trusting to his provision. Jesus rewarded her. How sweet the words of Jesus must have sounded. Women, you have great faith. 
your request is granted and her daughter was healed from that very hour come ye sinners poor and needy weak and wounded sick and sore jesus ready stands to save you full of pity love and power he is able he is willing doubt no more there is no surer ground on which to base our appeals for help than our status as christ servants and his status as our master our hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness we dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on jesus name on christ the solid rock we stand all other ground is sinking sand we must never give up praying to jesus for the salvation of those we love in the old testament lesson genesis chapter 32 verses 22 to 33 We have here the remarkable story of Jacob's wrestling with the angel and prevailing which is referred to in Hosea chapter 12 verse 4 While Jacob was earnest in prayer stirring up himself to take hold on God an angel takes hold on him Jacob persists in his holy importunity I will not let thee go except thou bless me whatever becomes of his family and journey he resolves to make the best he can of this opportunity and do not lose the advantage of his victory in the epistle reading hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 6 where it says In this passage the writer to the Hebrews lays down in addition the two great foundation acts of faith of the Christian life we must believe in god there can be no such thing as religion without that belief religion began when men became aware of god it ceases when they live a life in which for them god does not exist we must believe that god is interested as the writer to the hebrews put it we must believe that god is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him we must believe not only that god exists but also that he cares and is involved in the human situation for the christian that is easy for god came to the world in jesus christ to tell us how much he cares beloved in christ jesus saw her faith commended her granted her request and completely healed her daughter from that very hour hers was a great faith that called him lord our master her faith caused her to come on behalf of her daughter against all odds even when it appeared that she was being ignored and even turned away she trusted believed and hoped in jesus had tenacious faith kept hanging on to the hope that he would have mercy and help her and he did jesus at last greatly appreciated and honored her her that her daughter was healed The episode of this nameless and faceless woman of Canaan sets an exemplary standard of will power to the readers then and to us today. It was her will power which refused her to be dispossessed of self-confidence and made her win the battle with a man, ye even with God. To gain confidence or to lose it is a battle of human mind have you ever felt like you were at the end of your rope and just barely hanging on perhaps it is a situation at work with your health or that of your loved one 
maybe your family or one near you is in crisis. Is it at times such as this against all odds that God calls us to trust, believe and hope in Jesus? Our gracious Heavenly Father welcomes all who come to Him by faith. He does know, love, hear and provide for us. He knows he is best for us. God shows his mercy, grace and help for all people through the cross of Jesus, through his life-giving sacrifice for our forgiveness and the salvation of the entire world. A great faith which invites us to come to him, empowers us to seek him every day in every situation and enables us to trust him completely. May God graciously grant us that kind of faith, a faith that won't give up, a faith that trusts our Savior, won't let go of his promises, and carries us safely through this world and eventually into the arms of your loving, waiting Savior in the world to come. As believers in Christ, we need to be persistent, humble ourselves before God, be persistent in asking. If you persistent, he is merciful to grant us the things you do not deserve. Jesus rewards her faith by healing her daughter. Her faith was rewarded and she became one of the early Gentiles to enter the kingdom. May Jesus strengthen our faith in him and help our resolve to follow him more closely in our lives. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you Lord for your presence in our midst. We thank you Lord for speaking to us. Loving Father, give us the gift of perseverance to walk each day of our life with faith that with you on our side we will succeed in our endeavors. Bless each and every one of us. Continue to lead us and guide us. We ask this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. intercession let us join our prayers for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord Heavenly Father we pray for justice and peace in the whole world and for fullness of life for everyone Lord in your mercy hear our prayer for all who live in this place for the removal of all that divides us from each other and for true harmony in our country Lord in your mercy for all engaged in agriculture, industry and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country, Lord, in your mercy. For teachers and students, scientists, artists and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others, Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering, the poor and hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, 
the sick and the dying. Especially be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment are under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. For all to whom authority is interested in this and other countries, and especially for our president, the prime minister, the governor, and chief minister of this state, and for all who have power over other people. Lord, in your mercy. For the unity of all Christian people, and for their witness and service in the world. Lord, in your mercy. For your whole church in our country, for its councils and leaders, especially for the most reverend Dr. P.C. Singh, our moderator, moderator of the Church of South India and Metropolitan of Mahatma Church, for the most reverend Dr. P.C. Singh, our bishop, for Reverend Bruce Tangadurai, our presbyter, and for all other ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we also may share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hasten, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant these petitions which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we all stand and say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
of our hearts and our lips and give us grace to glorify you in our lives for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit let us bless the lord thanks be to god may the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise again in glory amen <laughs>